data really kind of reinforces the view that city has had. In fact, we've had this since end of April. But maybe we're already at peak growth pessimism in China. And so we are seeing a little bit of the rebound that we're seeing post the kind of COVID lockdowns. When I look at the details of the data, I think, uh, you know, the retail sales data was not a big surprise to us. So our forecast is pretty close to the actual outcome because we were expecting that some of the high frequency numbers would suggest there would be an improvement as, as the lockdown would ease. But I think the big surprise is really on the production and FAI data, which I think is encouraging. On the FAI data, I mean, we still need to look at the numbers in details, but obviously infrastructure investment is a really big push now of the government to kind of support aggregate demand. So uh, to the extent that real estate remains very challenging, uh, if infrastructure investment is doing a little bit more heavy lifting as the government uh, it continues to implement this policy, uh, maybe we're getting a bit of traction in the data. The other thing that's kind of uh, actually was a big surprise was the industrial production because we were expecting a 1.1% contraction Y on Y. So the fact that we've had a positive number perhaps still suggests that production side of China's economy was not really as disrupted by COVID. And China continues to remain uh, you know, fairly strong in terms of the manufacturing side and kind of reinforces the pretty strong trade data we had also earlier this month. So I think that provides a bit of, uh, you know, again, a positive surprise. So our view, you know, our growth forecast for this year in the second quarter, we were still forecasting China will be able to manage a positive growth Y on Y, a small positive, as opposed to some competitors saying we may be negative. And this data is encouraging. Now, just looking at the markets here, just a citing example with NEO, the Chinese EV maker, uh, the shares are surging 16 percent. Of course, uh, the company has a car launch today, but many analysts are associating this more with the Chinese economy rather than the company and the launch of a car itself. Uh, do you see the markets in this same way, uh, in the fact that uh, the Chinese economy coming out better than expected now? Uh, some analysts that we're talking to are bullish on Chinese equities. Does the city have the same view? Yes. So I think, you know, again, we don't want to get too excited. There's clearly still a lot of challenges in the China's economy. We still have dynamics of COVID, which obviously continues to act as a suppressant to aggregate demand because we have this heightened vigilant regime about, you know, mass testing and control. But nonetheless, we've had a lot of policy easing announcement. Uh, and for example, in the auto sector, we had all these kind of targeted tax measures on autos to encourage uh, tax uh, auto purchases. So maybe some of that is coming into the data. So I think, you know, again, we can't get too excited. 3.9% growth forecast for this year in China is still fairly low. But given how bearish and pessimistic people were, and given the positioning, I think there is still potential upside on Chinese equity. So we've also, in our mid-year outlook on China equity, we've also turned positive. And in fact, in our global asset allocation, we've been overweight Chinese equities for the last couple of months.